Thank you all for joining this version of the Extreme Connect Forum. I'm uh, James Clark, I'm the Regional Director for our SLED Central Organization, and we appreciate your time uh, that you're spending with us today. Today I get to spend some time with some of our best customers from the great state of Texas, and uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit today around what's going on in the K-12 educational segment. Uh, with us today is Dr. Akila Willery from Aldine Independent School District. I have Dominic Tong from Aldine School District and Mr. Dustin Harden from Humble School District. Um, how about we take a moment and each one of you introduce yourself a little bit and just tell us your role and, and uh, what you're doing there. Dominic, uh, we'll start with you. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I actually manage the IT department for the ISD. We have somewhere around 67,000 students, and uh, we are using extreme hardware, almost 99% in our data center and uh, each classroom. So we have Wi-Fi set up in every single building. Thank you, Dominic. How about you, Dr. Willery? Hello, my name is Akila Willery and I am the Executive Director of Professional and Digital Learning. So where Dominic's work completes, that's where my work picks up is everything that is on that network and how it impacts the classroom and the learning and everything else about day-to-day -day operations. That's going to be my area. In particular, uh, in, in talking about in instructional technology, also the virtual learning, which has been a big part of our year over this pandemic experience. Great, thanks Dr. Willery. And last but definitely not least, Mr. Harden. I'm Dustin Harden. I'm the uh, Chief Technology Officer for Humble ISD. Um, Humble is uh, just actually east of Aldean. We're real close to Intercontinental Airport here in, uh, in Houston. Um, we have about 45,000 students, um, pretty much all extreme wireless uh, switches, uh, use a lot of XMC. Uh, we have pretty much every day about 65,000 unique devices. We have way more devices than we have students, which is always fun since most kids bring a cell phone or switch or God knows what now uh, onto the network. And we have a robust guest network, parents are able to get on. So uh, strong partnership with Extreme and uh, really happy to be here. Hey, thank you, Dustin. So a lot of uh, talk lately, especially at Extreme Connect around the infinite enterprise and that's you know mobility cloud and data and i've heard data called and this is kind of ironic we're talking to texans here but data is the new oil uh, i've heard data is the new currency uh but you know data in its rawest form is just data and so it's what we do with that data and i'm really pleased that dr willer you're on here because there's a lot of discussion with our customers around um what you know the data that we're gathering and how do we especially with this digitization of uh, curriculum these days is how do we learn better uh, and I think Dominic we you and I had a conversation one day and we were talking about this is how can we look at uh, a student and say one student's on online for five hours and another's on for three and why does the three hour student have an A plus average and the five hour and so what is that student doing what's working what's not working are they actually doing curriculum or and those types of things. So I'd love to hear from you a little bit around uh, some of the challenges that you've faced with curriculum and some of the plans that you have moving forward. I think probably what we focused on a lot is in addition to the curriculum this year, but also the ways that humans can stay connected to each other, regardless of whether they're in the same space or if they're across uh, in, uh, some other form of staying in touch. and at the simplest form, so much of that was done with the way we're speaking right now through video conferencing. And what does that look like? What is the easiest across all devices? What is gonna be the easiest load on our infrastructure? And on top of it, when those conferences are over with, where do we store that video? Because somebody's gotta go back and reference it. Some student is going to have something they're gonna to need to review or at the, the rawest form, being able to have something that we can communicate directly to parents. So having some type of way that we can manage the video platforms, the video storage, 
anything that is going to be a huge load just graphically on our network is going to be a concern going uh, this way forward. And not just with the curriculum, but just in general, everything that we're doing right now across video, this is going to be here to stay. We, we may be zoomed out. We may be in a state of mind where we just want to be in the same room with each other, but ultimately, there's an efficiency factor that cannot be ignored once the world opens back up. We just like right now, none of us are in the same space. None of us are even in the same city, but we're able to have this connection together and, and have humans still be able to interact and function. So going forward, aside from having everything that is interoperable, aside from having everything in a cloud hosted way, we've got to make sure that humans are able to communicate and continue working no matter where they land. Agreed. Thanks, Dr. Willery. Appreciate that very much. Dustin, you kind of touched on this a little bit. You were talking about God knows what the kids bring in terms of devices to connect. And, you know, that infinite enterprise that we talk about is, you know, any user on any network and it has to be simple. It has to be scalable. It's got to be flexible. I'm just curious for you in terms of the pandemic has changed your IT strategy quite a bit. Can you talk to us a little bit about how things have evolved from that and what you're doing to connect to or deal with a lot of these connectivity challenges? Yeah, I think um, nearly every IT department either looked at their five-year plan and it sped it up to six years or just took the whole thing and threw it out the window because either it wasn't set up for what we were, what we we're going through um, and forced into or um, it was, oh, wow, we, we were wanting to do that anyways. You know, we were wanting to, to get to where we are today, and we were just kind of forced there, uh, whether we wanted to be or not. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure Dr. Willery can tell you, uh, a lot of people just don't like change, and that's usually what stops IT from moving forward well, whenever um, the country came to a halt, um, it was all of a sudden, oh, well, we were wanting to get soft phones on every teacher's laptop so they can call parents from their from a phone using a district extension and get voicemails from there. But there really wasn't a, a strategy to get there because nobody wanted to do that. And hey, we, we're doing it tomorrow. Look out for that email coming. So I think most... Um, for school districts, we had to be successful. And that's one unique thing is we saw so many businesses that, you know, especially that didn't have a good IT strategy, they, they're not around anymore uh, after the pandemic. School districts, we didn't have that luxury of, you know, potentially, I say the luxury of going bankrupt, but we didn't have the ability to, to fail. We had to succeed. The children have to learn. And we're going to figure out what that was. It, it's truly been amazing to see not just this district, but the districts across the country, all of us figure out what that means to us, um, regardless of the technology we chose to get there. Right. Thanks, Dustin. Appreciate that. So, Dominic, I asked the same question to you. How has this changed your IT strategy? How have you pivoted? Well, first of all, the pandemic it might definitely change our temporary overall strategy, right, immediately. We have to purchase enough devices. We have to figure out how to do remote support, remote security, and ex expedite is our priority. Kind of change a little bit, you know? Like Dustin said, we, we want to do this, we want to do that, have a five-year plan or six-year plan, but all of a sudden, that plan need to be done within 12 months. For example, of all the NISD, we purchased 67,000 devices for all the students within nine months. We implement that, install it, and they get them all configured with security and re remote support. We hand over to Dr. Willery so she can use it to educate the student. That's our priority. Yeah, that is amazing. The amount of devices that went out into K-12 was just unheard of. I mean, oh my gosh, we, we saw crazy numbers in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands, well, millions, literally millions. And so, um, thank you, Dominic. Yeah, so leading on with that, Dominic, um, how has the extreme account team helped keep you ahead of the challenges of this new distance learning model? Well, it's a new thing to us, you know. We, all the IT guys in the world, have an idea how we're going to get that all together. But 
in order to get them all together in a short time, you need expertise and support, right? Thing happen, thing change, priority change. So with extreme networks, these partnerships and extreme team is always one phone call away. I can call David, myself, associate, or call the GTEC directly. And we even have a few guys from extreme certified engineer on site to help us out. You know, putting things together is one thing. Configuring them all together is another thing. And then at the end, you have to deliver the end result to meet the expectation. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. And Dustin, I'm going to throw it over to you and ask the same question. You know, how has your extreme team helped you during these unprecedented times and changes? Uh, very similar to how they helped uh, Aldi. Um, one unique thing that uh, happened to us, though, and how uh, Extreme helped with this, believe it or not, as the pandemic was happening, we still opened a new elementary school. So this, you know, we had a brand new school. First day of school, there were no kids there since it was virtual, but uh, there were still teachers there. And then a few weeks later, all the students started showing up. And it was a, it was utilizing the new extreme technology. And this was the first campus we had with you know, the cloud IQ system running the wireless. We have uh, the legacy extreme controllers for everything else. And my team got no training. I mean, how could we go to training during the pandemic? Right. Um, so, uh, it, I mean, my account rep team is, is truly phenomenal. Spent hours on the phone. Uh, weekends, long nights with us getting it configured properly remotely um, while we knew that, you know, students and staff were going to be at this campus with technology we've never utilized before. Um, so that was one of many, many things during that time frame. Uh, you know, we did the whole uh, outdoor wireless as well. Um, you know, all, all the while, we, you know, these things didn't go away with tariffs and supply chain issues. Um, and the extreme team managed that for us, getting it to us uh, in a timely manner, keeping the price as low as they could with, with everything going on. And it's truly phenomenal. You know, what's interesting is, is we, I guess I could speak for myself, took for granted that everybody had connectivity at their home, that everybody had high speed access. And that's not the case. And, and you both, both Aldine and Humble stepped up and found resources to provide connectivity, whether it's, you know, just launching Wi-Fi in the parking lot. So people, and you went out and advertised it, right? Which is just amazing. And then you were able to control uh, access and those devices that connected in. I was thinking about, so in a prior life, I actually worked in the telecom side and back and a lot of my business was with the federal government and some with some three letter agencies and we used to do all kinds of interesting things but when a phone when a call center first started we really just dealt with the telecom folks and they were the folks that made sure the telephone center <clears throat> had multi-dial or multi-lines and their phone always worked right and then what happened was what we saw in call centers and you all deal with this now is what they call omni-channel. People communicate with call centers today via SMS. They email in, they do chat sessions, they do all kinds of different things. And what happened was, is we saw that instead of just dealing with the telecom folks, we were dealing with the different product managers and because they knew what the challenges were that they were you know, facing when the people called in. I see that Dr. Willery is kind of what's going on with you in terms of this digital learning, right? This digital enhanced experience of how the students are learning is it is imperative that we align ourselves with the Dr. Willerys with how we, do, because we can all sit in the room in the back, but it's what you're doing is we have to deliver the best service. And so are you seeing that happening more Dr. Willery in terms of your alignment with Dominic and the team around that? Absolutely. And this is something that I've stated 
pretty much over the past year and a half is that I think, at least with us, we are a Title I school district. So for anyone that is watching that is unfamiliar with what that means, that means that the majority of our students are considered economically disadvantaged. So what happens in a Title I school district environment is that we are prepared to receive federal support, state support, to make sure that we can close any gaps, whether it is gonna be with equipment, instructional materials, additional instructional support for the students that may not be available once they leave our buildings. But guess what happened with the pandemic? Nobody was in our buildings. So all of those things that we were used to having as top of the line resources for our students and our teachers, they were housed in one place, but when our kids went home, when our teachers and our staff went home, we no longer had control of the resources that they would have access to. So that was problem number one, is how do we get what they need to wherever they are and keep them productive? So the first thing, of course, like you mentioned, is connectivity. We made some really bold assumptions that not only our students would somehow, that we would be able to connect them back to the learning environment, but our staff was not able to connect to the learning environment. Mm -hmm. And I will even use myself as an example. Do I own a personal laptop? No, I use my work laptop for everything. So if there were a situation where I left that at work and then I go home and tomorrow a pandemic hits, then I'm probably not gonna be able to perform my job. So it, it was a lot of scrambling like that, not just for, for taking care of the students, but also keeping our staff connected when this work from home situation started. Then once you get what they need, you got to make sure that the connectivity is going to stay top tier because a heavy load on that network is going to be the video and also making sure everything that's graphically heavy is not going to have a lot of interruptions. So keeping that as 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 one you know service level agreement is is one part of it making sure that they are able to connect back to all the resources in a digital format which that was another issue with some of our students and just keeping everything where like dominic mentioned the, the, the long range plan was no longer a long range plan. He was being rather uh, optimistic by saying we had a few months to do it. No, we had a few weeks to figure some of this out. <laughs> and the supply chain challenges, of course, that was global. So it's, it's a little difficult to under, to, to, for your district leadership to sometimes understand that we're not able to go to a closet and start pulling out a bunch of resources. You have several layers to, to negotiate, several other groups that you need to coordinate with to make sure those things come back. And it, 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 was, it was very difficult. It, it, there were a lot of hard conversations to kind of calm the masses and say, hey, th this, is, this is what we need to do. And you have to, one other thing, you have to resist the I told you so moment. So I'm sure Dustin can probably echo this and CTOs from across the, the country can say they had probably many moments where they had to bite their tongue and say, hey, we told you we needed to update that network. We told you that we needed to update devices. And it was something that may have been a, a lower priority prior to the, the COVID public health emergency. Now, everyone in IT or instructional technology, we're, we're in the hot seat because you're expected to produce something that would normally take three, four and five years within three, four and five weeks. Okay. So it, you know, being able to, to, to be sensitive to the urgency of the situation, but also making the, the district leadership understand that there are still some processes that have to take place. There's some big hurdles that you have to cross in order to keep everybody functioning in a virtual learning environment. That's so true. And it's just amazing to see how you all have handled the pandemic and kept up, you know, with the times and changing needs of students technology. Um, you know, we've talked about the past 12 to 18 months and how challenging it's been and what you all have done to overcome those challenges. What do you see ahead for the next 12 to 18 months as you roll out new technologies? Dustin, I'll pass this one to you first. Oh, thanks so much. Um, I, I don't think any of us have a, a crystal ball right now for, for 18 months for sure, 12 months might be a stretch. Um, you know, 
uh, the, the federal government's going to give us a, a lot of additional funds um, through the, the last uh, uh, presidential act. And how we utilize that's going to shape some things that every district's doing. And the, I guess the, the best part about it is that every district, at least in Texas, is kind of getting to decide on what we can use that money for best. So um, we're all in a lot of planning right now, um, getting together, uh, looking at strategies and seeing where the greatest needs are. Um, I think one thing that's going to hit overall with that, though, that everyone needs to keep in mind is everything's going to be audited. Um, anytime you have federal dollars coming in, uh, audits come as well. So that ties into this whole idea that James brought up earlier about data. Um, that as we, the next 12, 18 months, I think it's going to be a lot of condensing down and looking at, at all these new data points that we have and maybe finding systems trying to, you know, locate data points that we're unable to get right now. One of the interesting things that we're trying to do with this, as we all know, virtual is not going away. And in Humble, uh, one unique thing that we're doing is we're not putting any constraints on virtual. A lot of uh, districts across the country are maybe saying that only you know X number of students can be virtual and only these classes because you can't have a teacher teaching all of these unique classes uh, with um, a, a full load plus more virtual classes. So we're trying to find this unique clustering model of making sure every family and student child that wants to be virtual can be. Maybe not all their teachers will be at the campuses that they originally thought they were at, but make sure they can have access to everything. Well, that pulls in a whole unique things when it comes to master scheduling. And then of course, attendance, which is how we all get our funding. So how can we, you know, look at all these different engagement avenues and collect that so that we can continue to see where our students are uh, from an attendance side and ensure as we move forward that they stay engaged. It's real easy to know if a kid's missed school for three days, if they're not physically there. <laughs> it's different if they're at home and you know a teacher just misses the fact that they've logged in for three days. So uh, a lot of these data points that you know, maybe we can see at the IT level, how can we get them in front of the teachers and empower the teachers to see all these unique things about how often students are logging in, what they're doing when they log in and those things. So that's gonna be, I, I, I believe a big push that's gonna be, you know, nationwide in K-12 is what, make sure if our students are staying virtual, that there's engagement there utilizing all these data points with technology. I'll, I'll add you, to that that uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of investment with the devices, with the updated networks. But as Dustin said, there is going to be a, a, a way that we have to report back how we spent that money. And one thing that I think might get overlooked in the immediate planning is what does that staffing and support look like? for this technology investment that's been made in every district. And we, I mean, Umble and Aldean are very similar in size and in the region. And I can say that the staffing focus is usually on the instructional side. The staffing is usually gonna be about the, the pieces that are very tangible touching that student and that teacher. But there's a, there's a curtain where a lot of us sit behind that curtain where those things have to continue functioning and we may take for granted that that the IT staff or that the the training staff can handle that so I, I would urge any districts that are looking long term to make sure that you have a plan to upskill your staff and also a way that you can support parents at home with those new technical skills that are required we learned very very quickly that uh, there was a lot of even jargon that that educators that we use in this space that we were throwing out there to parents at home during the pandemic that just completely were foreign to them. And when we said things like log into the LMS, they're like, whoa, pa hey, what, what is an LMS? You know? <laughs> and 
when we would say, oh, well, use your Google credentials. They're like, what the heck are my Google credentials? So th there are some things where we, we want to respect the fact that parents are not in this conversation every single day. So anything, number one, like I said, to upskill your current staff, whether it's instructional or, or technical, but then also have some kind of way that you can offer that immediate technical assistance to the families when they're not in that learning environment every single day. That we, we, we need to be sensitive to everyone's needs because assuming that anybody is, is going to be left out or, or somehow not able to connect and get those immediate questions answered, that's a stakeholder that you use. And every single one of those stakeholder groups are going to be important to the success of the kid. Thank you, Dr. Willery. Appreciate that. And so to that point, I guess, Dominic, can you talk to me a little bit about some of those, you, you've required some uh, additional services and support, and we've been able to provide those to you through Extreme. Can you talk a little bit about some of those? Yeah, definitely. You know, like during that pandemic, right, we had to figure out how to do a single sign on, like what they really we just said, where's my Google login, right? We have to simplify things so it won't be a burden for the parents at home, how to show the kids to do it how to help the tech support at home, right? So Extreme Team definitely work side by side with us to figure out all these obstacles. If something they cannot, it's not their cup of tea, they identify them, let us know, so we can get to the correct manufacturer, like firewall, you know, PDOS devices, and uh, OS support, things like that. It was a big help. If it's nice to have somebody right next to you to go through that, you know, uh, for us, you know. Thank you, Dominic. Yeah, so I was, you know, I guess one, we could say that uh, one of the things that came of this pandemic, both Dustin and Dominic, is that everyone finally realized who the rock stars were at the school district, right? <laughs> they they found out what you both already knew, and uh, which, is, which is great. Um, we're really pleased. I want to thank you all uh, Dr. Willery, Dustin, Dominic for joining us today. Uh, and for those of you that are attending the session, please uh, enjoy the rest of your uh, sessions and we look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.